met as an executive today and dealt with uh, a number of issues. Uh, we had a discussion on the uh, Ardoin parade or non-parade. Uh, I think members around the table expressed their, their views uh, in a way that uh, I hope uh, showed respect to each other, but uh, still I think the, the strength of opinion uh, was, was felt by everyone who was there. Uh, this is a serious issue uh, and um, for myself, because I don't like coming out of meetings and saying what other people have said at them, I made it very clear at the meeting that the only way forward uh, in terms of parades is that uh, parades take place uh, in a dignified and uh, respectful way and they are met with understanding uh, and tolerance uh, from those in the surrounding uh, areas. Uh, that will only be uh, possible uh, if we can get this uh, society to accept that there must be uh, permission given uh, to those who want to express their, their, their culture uh, without uh, any letter hindrance. Uh, and I think that uh, we have got an intolerance in our society uh, that isn't acceptable and we really do need to, to get uh, over that, uh, that issue. Uh, the uh, executive went on to consider the, the matter of the June monitoring round. I again point out that there are very serious repercussions uh, if that uh, monitoring round uh, is not resolved. Uh, it means that we will have uh, under expenditure in terms of capital projects, uh, which means that because we haven't been able to allocate money, it will go back to Treasury. Uh, and that would be the case for about £80 million. Uh, it would be absurd, considering the need in Northern Ireland, that uh, we couldn't agree a paper uh, with allocations for that capital funding. <coughs> On the other hand, uh, as far as resource expenditure is concerned, uh, it would put us in a position where we would overspend in resource, uh, we would be penalised by the government, uh, you would have accounting officers in each of the departments having to intervene because uh, there were um, spending limits were being uh, exceeded. Uh, and you would find that uh, some of the reallocations that were being made would not happen. And that means that some very important projects, and I don't want to raise uh, any tensions by outlining what they are, but some very important projects would not proceed and some important issues would have to be suspended uh, if that agreement was not reached. So there is no choice here in terms of uh, ministers. They have to agree the June monitoring uh, round, and they need to do that literally within days. Tracy? Uh, given the fact that there were some quite bizarre predictions about what could or could not happen at this executive, are you heartened by the fact that politicians are coming out and talking about a respectful and sensible conversation? Well, uh, I love it when we disappoint the, the, the media. Mm -hmm. they, they hype up uh, a meeting, uh, make all sorts of predictions about what's going to happen, and then when it doesn't happen, it's our fault for not making it happen. Uh, the, the reality, of course, is that we're, we're there to express our views. Uh, I, I was in the, the chair at that uh, particular time. Uh, I expect all members of the, the executive uh, to behave at those meetings in a respectful way, uh, to put their case however strongly, uh, but uh, it has to be done in the, the context that we recognise that people around the, the table will have a variety of views on any issue that's discussed. So, uh, you know, I'm not at all disappointed uh, I would have expected nothing less from colleagues that we could come to a meeting, express our views, different though they may be, uh, in a way that's civilised. We're told there's a joint statement coming from the executive. When will we get that and give us some idea, if you can, what it will say? Well, I don't think it's going to say much more than the fact that uh, we want to see uh, a, a peaceful uh, period of time over the next number of weeks in Northern Ireland, that everyone should respect the, the, the law. Uh, and you know, that is the view of everybody uh, around that, uh, that table. It's a view that uh, I and others have been expressing over these last number of uh, weeks and, uh, and months. Uh, I have to say that you know, uh, I come from a, a position, because I've listened to, to some of the, the nonsense that I, I've heard from commentators, you know, that uh, somehow if there is violence on the 12th, the responsibility will fall on the unionist leadership. Uh, I have, over the, the last uh, number of months, had to, to look at what has happened in the Ardoin area over preceding years. There has been uh, violence one year after another on the 12th of July. 
that violence has been of such a level that has had an impact o on Northern Ireland itself. Uh, it would have happened again this year without question. All of the reports that we were getting from the local area about the anger being felt by the Parades Commission decision, by their submission to the uh, attempt by Gark and others uh, to, to threaten them and to indicate that they'll mobilise thousands uh, of people has angered uh, the uh, Protestant Unionist and Loyalist community uh, in the, the area. The police were getting the messages back. I spoke with the police and indeed the police have publicly indicated that the intelligence that they were receiving indicated that there was going to be uh, violence uh, on the, the 12th of July. Given that set of circumstances, uh, I think that the, uh, the media and certainly the, the rest of Northern Ireland is more likely to than the media, but you should actually be applauding people for coming together and putting out a, a statement saying they're going to use their influence to ensure that uh, any reaction is peaceful uh, and uh, lawful. Uh, encouraging people to follow a political way forward. That's something that should be encouraged. It is the only way forward for, for Northern Ireland. Uh, and I, I trust that that will be the outcome. You can never guarantee uh, these, these matters because there are always going to be people out there who will behave uh, in a ridiculous manner and clearly aren't under the influence of any of the, the organisations that have, uh, are a party to that, that statement. Uh, so let's get away from this media view that somehow violence is inevitable and if it takes place it's somehow the responsibility of those who are saying that they don't want to have violence and they're encouraging people not to have violence. G Lord. Given that we've had um, apparently a constructive executive meeting with a measured discussion uh, today, should we take it that the uh, so-called graduated response, which Drew Nelson said would affect politics and governance, that that is going to be limited to contact with the Parades Commission and withdrawal from inter-party negotiations, the, the steps that we've already seen effectively? There will be a graduated response. It'll be outlined uh, by the unionist leadership, uh, as they have indicated in their, their statement. You'll probably not have too long to wait for the, the next step to be uh, announced. Uh, and we'll do it according to our, our own timetable and our own agenda. Uh, we'll not be enticed by the questions of the, the press to do it before that. But today proves so that participation in executive meetings is not going to form part of that response. There was, there was no part of the statement that was issued last week that indicated that anything of that sort would be taking place uh, during the course of that period of time. It is up to the leaders of unionism to decide what further steps will what be taken. in the future? Well, that's what I'm saying. It will be up to the unionist uh, leadership to decide what is going to happen and when it is going to happen, and it's at that stage that we will announce it to the press. Uh, you understand today that the discussion on parades went beyond the North Belfast issue. Did you detect that there was enough, there are signs in that that could be built on by the executive? Well, I think that there was a willingness to look at various options, even for Ardoyne, and maybe some of those we can follow up in the days to come, although time is very short. From our point of view, obviously, the issue of Ardoyne is immediate. It's one that I think stands out as being a crass decision by the Parades Commission. I think that people in Northern Ireland are paying the price uh, for having a parades commission that's clearly out of its depth, is totally incompetent, uh, and was prepared to cave into to violence. Okay, folks, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.